Roll. Roll oh, okay. Yeah. You are the self-proclaimed king of Wuss Rock? Yeah, yeah. So what does Wuss Rock mean to you? Well, rock with feelings, and maybe not uh, the stereotypical masculine feelings of fight, hurt, anger, destruction, death, but you know, like the other, the other range of emotions that human beings are capable of experiencing. Well, I found honest work, and the Lord knows I tried. Well, I found honest work, and the Lord knows I tried. up a song about Mr. Nakata. Nothing really rhymes with Mr. Nakata. I'll try and I'll try till the day he dies, hopefully long from now. I really, really wanted to be a guitar player like with Mystique and it turned out that I didn't really have any Mystique at all and I also couldn't really play guitar all that well. <laughs> Uh, so just kind of on like a on a on a whim, I audited a, a songwriting class, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, like these things have like a structure; they can be like made. And I'm good at structure. I have a background in computer science. Like I understand how to like build a program, and that's all songs are. Songs are like information in like certain sequences that like express ideas and like manipulate and hack people's like emotions, you know, like, okay, I think I can, I think I could do that. So what's the trick to hacking people's emotions? <laughs> you have to use yourself as a test subject, unfortunately. It took a while to be able to figure that out, you know. Uh, you know, I wrote like a lot of really bad songs and uh, they weren't really about anything. The subtext was always like a desperate cry of, 
hey, everybody, think I'm cool. <laughs> I think that was about it. Eventually, you just get to the point where you're like, why would anyone care about this? Why do I care about this? Oh, maybe maybe I need to not write songs that project me as who I want to be, you know, or I want people to think that I'm cool or funny or something like that. And what if I just wrote stuff that was just as raw as I could make it? I have a knack for awkward silences Late night drunk text messages I'm great at playing dumb She doesn't care much for my politics For sentimental atheists Who disagree for fun We're off to an awful start Proudly showing off our purple hearts Comparing battle scars and Uh, this is me getting my, my first musical instrument, a trumpet. And did you like the trumpet? Yeah, I loved it. I still have it. It's literally right there, the same trumpet. <laughs> I don't think I ever thought of music as like a possible career option until maybe I went to school to study music. <laughs> Even still, half the time I'm like, is this my job? Do I get, like, this is what I do for a living? I go around and like I, I I make noises with my mouth that like please the auditory organs of one mammalian species on this planet. Like that's what I do for a job. That's insane. That's literally me showing a chicken at the county fair. So I mean, you had a pretty strong religious background growing up. I was homeschooled uh, until I went to college, basically. 
at some point I was like, nah, I don't really buy much of that anymore. And um, I think I'm actually much happier not having to carry around the, you know, a lot of the cognitive, uh, cognitive dissonance that can come from a, a fundamentalist upbringing. You know, when you grow up and every single person that you've ever met in your entire life says, you know, the earth is 6,000 years old or whatever else, then it can be a bit of a reality check when you, you know, kind of uh, arrive in the real world and find out that a lot of that stuff is literally not true. I mean, it's like a textbook existential crisis where all of a sudden everything you know and believe is kind of like yanked out and you're forced to confront it. It's funny, uh, I've, I've written about kind of that process for me in songs and things. And I've kind of more in the loss of my childhood religion, I guess. But I think therapy is a great tool for that, for peeling off like social conditioning, for actually getting at the core of, of who you are. And uh, I certainly find that also to be the case with songwriting, or I imagine like any kind of creative art people go through is you're ultimately just kind of dismantling uh, yourself in order to get to know yourself. And you're stripping away the, uh, the things that maybe don't make any sense and hopefully finding out who, who you actually are. Is it painful? Uh, it's painful in like the way that like taking off like a scab is kind of painful and that it's it can hurt a little bit, but it's really gratifying <laughs> at the same time. I was born in a mortuary full of worry ice. Water in my veins gave my heart in the school library. my tongue in the sanctuary heaven spare me hands raised above my head send my brain to the seminary never seen again so swing low gray bones I don't know if I'll ever spine at the wedding chapel full of people feet turning into lead lost a leg at the iron foundry where they found me dead i drained my blood at the mortuary no more worry ice water in my veins took my bones to the cemetery where they still Dragons everywhere. Look at this double handed flames of fire. Oh, I missed on that. Okay. Nerd culture. Yeah. You're into it. Well, yeah, I'm a nerd, I guess. So, yeah, I'm kind of like into nerd culture and, and, and the like. Uh, the nice thing about being a nerd is that you can kind of just pick whatever thing you're interested in and be a nerd about it. So, I find that it's a culture filled with lovely, obsessive people. I mean, intelligence isn't a requirement, just that you love it. <laughs> The Legend of Zelda for Nintendo is still my favorite video game of all time. 
it was just this exciting giant you know world and uh probably about every four or five years i'll i'll pull it up and i'll play through the original legend of zelda but i've never actually beaten the game before uh there are two two kind of quests so you beat the game once and then the whole world kind of changes and uh, you can play through the game again, but it's a totally different map. And I've never finished the, the second quest for Zelda. And I think it's just because I, I don't like the idea of it ever, ever really ending. So I always get to like the last dungeon and I kind of stop because I don't ever want to, I just never want to finish it. It just is too, too much fun. On the far side of the universe there's a little sphere we call the Earth. It's an undiscovered paradise. You'll love it here. People are nice. We're far from perfect. We spend a lot of time inventing ways to kill each other still. We think you'll find a lot to love once you get to know.
it helps me to have an idea of the the album as a whole and i think of it like when you first start playing guitar for instance like you learn one note and then you learn to add like another note and then once you know like three you can play a chord you know and it, it builds that way and then you realize you can take a chord and add another chord and then that grows and then uh you realize you can have like sections of chords and then you realize oh i can put like a melody onto those too and then i can put words on the melody you just keep stacking and stacking and stacking uh and then once you have all of those you have a song and that's cool but then <laughs> then you can also like take a song and put it next to another song and sometimes uh that will kind of like one song can be used to prepare another song like prepare an idea and then you can string those along until you have you're telling like a bigger story filled with a lot of ideas and then you have a record and then you take the record and then you think is there like a, a visual concept that can express all the ideas and you know the flow of the songs and the records and all that stuff oh and then uh you know how did we make this record did that also like have to do with the values espoused in the songs like what does the media landscape look like is there a way that we can express this on you know music videos or through print or th what does a live show look like what's the ideal environment for that like really there are like creative things at like every single level of putting out a record and uh i think i i didn't really realize that when i started out and now i'm kind of starting to enjoy the whole process of of making a record and and putting it out whereas before i would have been like oh i wrote a song and i'm done you know N not so much like uh, i think being an artist is is also about like preparing people and preparing the context you know trying to create a scenario in which when by the time i get up and play on stage like i can't fail when i'm up there like people have already like they know a bit of the songs they know a bit about me they know maybe a bit about how things were made and they are primed and and ready late night call and i'm at your door teenage tears on the kitchen floor I pull you close and hold my breath Feel your heart beat through your summer dress Shuffle our feet slowly to the stereo And if your boyfriend suddenly appears If your father comes home and finds us here You and I, we won't need an alibi It's only dancing It's only dancing We're a ball in a cover band And just for kids Take my hand It's something that all good friends do It's not like I'm in love with you What a crazy idea Where did you get that? So let's tangle up my fingertips And I'll rest a hand upon your hips There's nothing to see It's all so
This program is made possible by the state's Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.